I make this whole thumbnail for a video at the end of April. Gaya Tra Tri Clubs having something to do with Ina because Ina had three eyes as well. A rebirth festival for the Eon. Charmony festival. It's really the Kakava, but it's every Ember era. This is what's gonna happen in Penacony. Hello, Misha, or should I call you uh, Mikhail? I posted a video about Gallagher and Misha. Somebody left a comment saying that I nailed it. So we'll find out. I'm worried something's gonna happen to Misha. Did you guys see the announcement from Honkai Star Rail? After completing turtle based mission, some characters who have obtained visitor verification may not visit the express and send messages temporarily. Which is weird because the thing about the visitor verification, right? If you're only doing the main quest, there are only four characters that obtain the visitor verification. They are Bronya and Zila from the Bellobok quest and then Jing Yuan and for some reason Misha the others they're like you have to do the side quest you have to do the the trail based continuance quest Ronya and Zila are not in Penakoni Jing Yuan we see him briefly in the trailer but I doubt it's gonna be him too so uh, probably something gonna happen to Misha I'm a bit worried we're back to where it all began <gasps> Firefly beneath the dreamscape of Penakoni lies another more chaotic more primal memory zone so it's really like like the movie Inception because you're so deep in the dream when you die instead of waking up you go to a place called Limbo which is something more chaotic just raw subconsciousness similar concept because this is Japella the city of sins Oh wait 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 this was from Kafka's video the Japella rebellion look at her outfit man i just realized how much i like firefly for being the first stellar hunter firefly is like she's just a baby girl okay wait that Japella rebellion it was scene 46 if i'm not mistaken and then the everflame mansion scene it was 37 so is it like the lower the number the later the scene is a countdown to the end of the script i mean that's interesting right because like if it's like in the movie it's like scene one and then they go up in numbers right but it's the other way around but if Eru is a follower of finality and finality is moving backwards so that kind of makes sense no wonder miss acheron is so averse to drawing her blade it's hard to imagine such terrifying power could reside in an ordinary sheath See, this is what I said when I was reasoning why Akron didn't want to save Firefly and people were calling me <laughs> like, nah, that's not it. It's because she's finality, she's moving backwards. The Molten Knight's true identity was actually a young girl. For her, this is a secret that she cannot allow others to know. That being the case, I think we can believe she's willing to cooperate. Yeah, it is, isn't it? It's ironic that they just immediately trust Firefly. But I guess Firefly is, is smart. She's like, I'm not gonna show up as Sam. I'm gonna show up as Firefly first and like befriend Trailblazer because she's baby girl. Yeah, that's, that's the simplest explanation to it all. That's why we believe her so easily. Further observations are needed before we decide whether to trust <gasps> Misha. There is someone I need to talk to. Wait, hold on, hold on, wait. You can see him? Weld can see Misha? The Reverie Hotel's bellboy. Weld can see Misha. He knows that Misha is a bellboy. Hello, Misha. I'm Welt. Uh, we met in a dream. They did? I was so confused. You can see him? <laughs> Clocky is a good friend of mine. We all live here. We? After my work in the beautiful dream ends, I'll go back home. His home is here? This sleepy... <laughs> Can you describe <laughs> what it looks like? So you know, big monster, purple, many eyes on the arm. Sleepy is a memory zone name. Why are we just accepting that when Misha said that, oh, you know, I work at the Dream Hotel, then I go back home here. Why are we not questioning that statement? Why is his home here? Why? Why are we so normal about this? They're just, they're just talking about all of this and then we're like, yeah, that makes sense. It's pretty normal. Where am I going? Whoa, is that a black hole? Why is his clothes similar to me? Misha, where are we going? It's a relief to see you safe and sound, Miss Robin. And she sounds well, too. Hearing you speak, it sounds as if your voice has made somewhat of a recovery. I hate to admit it, but the harmony in this place 
resonates more broadly than within the sweet dream. Interesting. Okay, so that makes more sense. Because I've been confused. Because if to say that the golden hour or like the dreamscape that built by the family is the harmony, right? And they are saying that the watchmaker is the traitor. That would make the watchmaker be on the different side of the harmony. But if that is the case and we are trying to do things to help Mikhail be against the family, how is it that Trailblazer is seen having a new path as in following the harmony? So it makes more sense now. So this place is more like the harmony and the dreamscape made by the family to seal off this place is the one that is not aligned with the harmony. In the decade following the war, Penagoni faced challenges internal and external. To protect Asdana, Tiernan took up the way of the Trailblaze and led the Lampmoth family to explore beyond the system only to be surrounded and wiped out by the swarm. So Tiernan is the butterfly? So there's this book, right? The Seven Family. Something, something Seven Family. In that readable, it says that there were seven, right? And then one of them is the butterfly who went out and then met a bigger insect and then died. Will you tell us where the Stellaron is? <laughs> it's in the Grand Theater, isn't it? It is the Panacone Grand Theater itself. No matter who the traitor is, or what orders they give me, I won't let the Charmony Festival become an event that destroys Harmony itself, or the paradise in our dreams. Indeed, for the paradise in our dreams. No, oh, I don't know. Even if we count Robin as an ally, something felt off about Mr. Sunday just now. I felt it too, yeah. When Robin was saying that it's for the paradise that we dream of and the camera shifted to Sunday, we didn't see his eyes. We only see him saying it. That is like villain red flag. That's also what happened when Cocolia was talking to trailblazers. They're like, oh yeah, I'll let you guys help us. And we didn't see her face. She was shot from like sideways. Sunday cares about Robin, but maybe that's what making him a villain in the end. Because he wants to keep her in the cage to keep her alive. How do I get there? Oh, this way again. Okay. Who in the right mind would impersonate the Sienjo Alliance or the Galaxy Rangers? We're finally asking some good questions. Why is she pretending to be a Galaxy Ranger specifically? What worries me more are the anomalies within the family. I see why this quest is like 10 hour long. This information, right? I know that this part is new to them. That there's something suspicious about the invitation. That the family don't usually send out invitation to other factions across the universe. But we already know this from Himeko from the first quest in 2.0. Why are they repeating this information just so that these two could have a conversation? I believe the purpose of the journey isn't just about following a path that's always considered absolutely right. It's more about doing your best to choose the right path for yourself among countless possibilities. So now that's three people. They're saying all this stuff about like your end already predetermined, but then you can do your own thing until up to that point, which is what Icron said. And then there's Firefly with like, yeah, death is inevitable, but we can still do many things before that. And then there's Dunhung. Two guests just boarded saying they were looking for Boot Hill. So I told them to wait in the parlor car. Two? Are they... Look, wow. we welcome all passengers on the Astral Express, but sneaking in like that, you have no regard for etiquette. My apologies, Conductor. It was an oversight on my part. Well, let's cut to the chase. Spill everything you know. Before that, please allow me to introduce myself. My name <gasps> is Black Swan, and I serve the Garden of Recollection as a memo keeper. Whoa! As for Acheron's story... Whoa! They're here together! I'm sure she knows it better than I do. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yes, yes. Whoa, they're here together. I mean, of course they're here together. I, I wasn't surprised. I wasn't surprised. You garden of recollection shirtbag. You betrayed me. I apologize, but she did that at my request. Due to certain reasons, I have been exiled by the family. Thankfully, this memo keeper came to my aid and helped me escape their surveillance unnoticed. <laughs> I can immediately step up the moment Boot Hill was about to like be angry at Black Swan. Like, hey, don't talk to my girlfriend like that. How about this? 
I'll put a few bullet holes in your head and see what secrets spill out. I love how Icon is really just so indifferent and Buddha is like full of all these emotions. Look at the way he's standing, bro. If I were in Icon's position, I wouldn't have taken him seriously either. As far as I can tell, she's not a threat and seems to be telling the truth. Look at them defending each other, wife's behavior. I love that for them. I love that for them. Galaxy Rangers are known for their elusive nature and limited contact with each other. So this was the only way I could reach out to you. Oh, that's why. Only by doing this can I find a true Galaxy Ranger and fulfill a long-standing promise. So this is the man that was talking to her before she left for Penacone. Also the guy that was in the Rondo Across Countless Calpas video. I thought it could be Free Bass, but apparently not. Oh, look at that. It'll be sad if it turns out to be the villain, right? Yeah, so there's that thing, right? With Gaia Tra Triclops having three eyes. It may have something to do with Ina, the Eon of Order that was assimilated by Shippe because Ina had three eyes as well and the third eye has the same color scheme as a venturin's eye which is something that is like supposed to be important because they keep talking about it right everybody who sees a venturin's like oh pretty eyes and i was thinking along the lines of like how the sigonians people they had that kakava festival every year because it's like a rebirth festival for the eon and in a the order was assimilated by shippe and shippe is like the eons of Paracony. but the thing is there's a lot of eye symbolism going on in Penacony instead of like puzzle and stuff like Shippe. And then there's like this whole Charmony festival that they do every Ember era, which is for what? So I was thinking like, what if Anna is still there somewhat and Charmony festival is really the Kakava, but it's instead of every year, it's every Ember era. But Order is dead. The thing is, it's not that Anna, the Order just died. Anna is absorbed by Harmony, right? They were absorbed by Shippe. The wording is very important because when something is absorbed, what does it mean? You know, like when cloth, it absorbs water. Does it mean that the water is gone? Does it mean that the water disappears? No. It means the water now becomes part of the cloth. So Ina is part of Shippe. So that's where my head is right now. Like Charmony Festival is like Kakava. So instead of every year, it's every Ember Era. And Ember Era is really, they count new Ember Era every time Klipoth, the Eon of Preservation, swing their hammer. So now we are in a new Ember Era because back in Bellowbok, remember when we were fighting Cocolia and then Trailblazer was tapped by Cocolia, right? And then they kind of like got into this place where they drew Klipoth's gaze and that's when Klipoth swung their hammer and that started the new Ember Era, hence the Chamonix Festival now. But how long, how many many years an ember era it really depends it really depends when clipoth would swing their hammer it can be 75 years hundreds it was after Bellabog that we were supposed to go to Panacone. Remember when Kafka was uninvitedly came to the Express and we were about to make a jump? That's when we were about to make a jump to Panacone because Himeko received the invitation and said that, yeah, we're coming to Panacone because we were invited. But it was after Bellabog. Isn't that the same paradise we yearn for? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes. Oh no, Sunday. Uh oh. He still believes in this Panacone. Sunday still believes in this version of Panacone. It's the same as the paradise in their dreams. I'm not the only one getting the vibe that Sunday is truly suspicious, right? The name of the boss is something something Septus and Septa is like seven and Sunday is the seventh day of the week. Even if this whole place is an illusion, it's still my paradise and I'll treasure every moment I spend here. Look at all these guests conveniently put at these locations to convince Robin that this paradise is, you know, it. If even you, my brother, don't believe that the harmony will save the weak, then which eon can make our dreams come true? Oh, it's sad seeing her realizing that Sunday no longer shares the same value as her. People often forget that. When the first bird took flight, the entire world envisioned a future where no more fledglings would ever crash to their death. Well, we can argue that, yeah, Sunday is like very suspicious. It's still like following the harmony, which is now corrupted, following the family. 
and deviated from the dream that he once shared with Robin. And because Robin broke free, she, she breaks free from the cage and like she escapes Penacony. She sees the outside world and Sunday stays inside because he's too scared to break free. But then where does his reluctance of breaking free end? And where does the influence of the family start to take over him? Does that make sense? He stays because he's too afraid because he's like, nah, birds are not meant to fly. That's why he stays in Penacony. That's why Robin left. But the longer he stays, the more he's influenced by the family. So it's like a bit sad when you think about it. It's hard to like just 100% hate him for his view because he does care about Robin. Yeah, he's like already in too deep. What is it that people say like, if you're already in too deep in the trauma, you wouldn't know that what you're experiencing and doing is wrong. That's always been the thing that you know. I don't know if you guys saw it, but I posted a video a couple of weeks ago, I think, about Gallagher and Misha. And then yesterday, somebody left a comment saying that I nailed it. I don't know what I nailed, <laughs> but it's something in that video. So we'll find out. That's right. As long as we pose a threat to the Stellaron, either with words or otherwise, we have a chance of gaining the upper hand. Look at my baby girl. She's a war criminal and that's good for her, okay? And Miss Firefly, we thank you for all your support. We're faced with a formidable enemy. As long as the Astral Express and Stellaron Hunter's objectives are aligned, we're willing to cooperate with you. <laughs> Himeko speaking so softly to Firefly, like, Oh yeah, your mission, Star Hunters and us, the Express, we are aligned. We're gonna team up with you. And then with Kafka, she's just like, Oh, we're not gonna get in bed with Star Hunters. Nah. -uh. Uh, Himeko, you're funny. She is funny. As the last group of contestants, how confident are you in overcoming all of the challenges? Is that guy also voiced by Aventurin's VA? He sounds like Aventurin a little bit. Hello, everyone. I'm Firefly. No, you're a baby girl. I'm trying to be normal with Firefly, but I can't. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm the director of Soulglad's factory, Ideen Leader. Wait, that Ideen guy? That's him, right? That's like a picture of him when he was young. It's also that Gopher Wood is no longer a young man. Is after this, for you guys who have done it, is it like still long from here? Can I ambitiously finish this tomorrow within four hours? <laughs> So from this point onwards, it's still, is, is it still long? Or is it like actually like halfway? Go finish it? No. We're not staying here until 4 a.m. in the morning. I mean, curious, what's inside that memory bubble? No, no, we'll stop here. We'll stop here, right? We'll find out more tomorrow. Yeah, we'll stop here. So about that comment that I got on the video saying that I got something right, but I don't know what that is. What is that new light cone? So that's Rosalina, the lady over there. And this is Mikhail. And this is Tiernan. What I said in the video is that Tiernan is Gallagher. Or like Gallagher is created in the image of Tiernan. Look at the hair, the brown hair. That's like Gallagher. That's what I said in the video. And that Misha is Mikhail, created by Mikhail himself in a dreamscape. Look at the time! You finished much faster than that red-haired contestant did! Which red hair? They're not talking about Himeko, right? Himeko is a woman. They're not talking about a he. Red hair? Is it Well, what characters? It cannot be him, right? He's the only red hair that I know. Luca. Yeah, there's Luca. But what would Luca be doing here? The only red hair in your mind is Himeko. Same. Same girl. It's behind the shelves, right? Firefly is so cute. It's her first time being Hanu and she's like so excited. <laughs> Just gonna run. Fuzzy run. I know, right? I was like whatever with Firefly before. But seeing her now is like Firefly's baby girl. Or it's really him. Why would he be here? Are we fighting him here? I struggled so much fighting Argenti back then. We're gonna be here for a while, guys. Wishing you joy under their radius. I thought he was with Robin talking to the Dream Master. You already worked things out with the Dream Master? We delved into the truth about Penacony and its Stellaron and have come to a consensus. <laughs> He's truly a villain now. I and the Oak family cannot acquiesce to your request. 
The planet of festivities cannot and will not revert to a place characterized by chaos, disorder, or anarchy. Disorder. Many eye symbolism going on. And if you notice one in Aventurin's teaser video where he was like playing gamble in Panacone, there's also eye big on the floor when he was like rising up on the stage. And the Dream Master also have eye thingy going on with him. Also... It'd be best to tell us the ins and outs of that meeting. Also, where's Weld? Let's talk about our tribulations and choices, our ideals and beliefs, and our final course of action. The only path to take. If it's really the eon of order that's behind all this, this entire time, that will be very crazy. Maybe we will have a confirmation about Adventure in God someday, but I feel like at this point, it's obvious. Because Ina is like all about order. And for Adventure to be blessed by Gayatra Triclops and to ensure that he always wins his bet, it's kind of like so that there's no disorder. Ina kind of like remove all obstacles in his way to ensure his success. In a way, good luck, you know, but there's really just Ina watching over him all this while. Someday, might I ask you to beseech them to cast their light unto me and question me in their stead so that no light may be concealed? Sure. Do you love your God as you do yourself? <laughs> Your God. Always heeding their admonishments. Which God, Sunday? Have you strayed from the path expected by your God? Betraying their name. Which God, Sunday? They have seen your faith and have endorsed your faith. <laughs> they who? They who? They who, huh? Just a moment. I have another question I hope to have answered. The God you both mentioned. Are they truly yes. Shive? That's that's the question. That's that's the question. Which, Which other, other god could, could perfectly harmonize this if not for the great, great one? one? Shive. Uh I don't know. Ina? In the distant past, there existed an eon. With one flick of the wrist, they crafted the laws of the cosmos. Their followers formed the Beyond the Sky Choir spreading solemn and reverent hymns throughout the universe. Lore. Later, they fell. Though an eon may perish, paths with no masters still linger. In the all-forgiving harmony, echoes of bygone dissonance may subtly arise. Mr. Yang. You're telling the truth, <laughs> Mr. Yang. Enough with the lore. Being overly astute can be a detriment. Especially when you find yourself alone and without allies. Oh no, what are you gonna do to Weld? This is the true reason I can't sing. The shadow that envelops Penacony is actually... We were never children of the Harmony. Our ideal paradise could not have been crafted by Shipe. True bliss can only be guaranteed by the one who transcends the many. Within the foundation of law, humanity establishes civilization, and through harmony, we obtain order. Yo! Wow! Yo! Holy shit, it's actually true? Oh, and I fall aligned with how old is Sunday? No. Enough fall during the swarm disaster, which I forgot how many embers, ember eras ago. Well, Aventurin cannot be that old, right? Aventurin probably like late 20s. So what I'm thinking with the Gayatra Triclops, instead of it being literally Ina the Order, is like, you know how like urban legend, they become like fiction. But at once upon a time, it was a real thing. After many generations and generations, then it becomes legend and fiction. So perhaps at one point in time, it was really Ina the Order. And Sigonia was one of the planets that was watched over by Ina. And then they fell during the storm disaster or like disappeared and then Ina become a legend and then after many 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 years the Sigonia people then worship Gaeta Triclops which was a god remember that right because they they said that the Sigonia they developed their own belief system they don't worship eons they worship a god called Gaeta Triclops 
So it's like through legends and stuff, you know, the order become Gaeta Triclops. That's what I think happened. How did Aventurin get blessed? Maybe instead of saying it is is good luck, it's more like because Ina hates disorder, unpredictable things to happen. So they ensure to like remove all obstacles in Aventurin's way. And that's how he always succeeds in whatever that he does. But because they don't know about Ina's probably still watching over him. And that's why they think it's just good luck. I don't think what Sunday is using is the power of Shiphe Harmony. If we are to believe that Robin has been blessed by Shiphe the Harmony herself, then the true harmony is like the one that heals people. That's why she sings, right? To broadcast her voice to heal people. I remember when we first arrived in the dreamscape and we fell and then Robin kind of like used that mind power thingy on us to make us attune to the harmony. That's like the true harmony. But what Sunday is having is probably power from Ina instead of Shipe. As you all may know, there are societal norms like weekends and long weekends that exist on some worlds. And it is only on these days that people do not have to adhere to the law where the strong prey on the weak. Society's ideal system should be seven rest days. We were just joking about his name and like Robin being like another day of the week name. But he's really like, mm -mm, there cannot only be one Sunday. There should be more Sunday. Oh no, I kind of agree though with the seven rest day. We should just rest. Like his argument is not bad. Not gonna lie, it's not bad. They can't make such a compelling argument for the villain like this. Come on. The thing is, is that he wants people to live in a dream. That's the problem, right? We like the seven rest day concept, but not that everyone is stuck in a dream forever. Yeah, what's the point of seven Sundays if it's just a dream? Which brings us back to Akron's question all the way back in 2.0 Quest. She asked Trailblazer whether they would want to stay in a dream where no sadness grief or anything would ever happen to them and they could stay forever with their friends and all. From my perspective, individuals making choices for themselves is their birthright. Mm. The want to escape may be innate in the weak. But whether they are weak or not, it is not up to another to decide. Hell yeah! Is even more impactful coming from her because one, she is like dying, and second, she's a follower of Elio. Everything is part of a script, but she's like, no, fate is one thing, but I want to do what I want to do while I can. Hello, Misha, or should I call you uh, Mikael? As a hotel doorman, you know Panacone best among us. Oh, surely. That's the only reason he's here right now. Himeko, I still don't get it. Why were you so sure that Misha had a connection with this dream bubble? Because Himeko is a lore theorist. She knows what's up. Hold on. This doesn't make sense. Didn't I grow up in Dreamflux Reef? <laughs> it's funny to me that Misha is just so convinced that he grew up in Dreamflux when Dreamflux is literally a dreamscape. What do you mean you were born in a dream and grew up there? Mikhail is... is grandpa's name. But we haven't heard anything about the watchmaker having descendants. What's also weird, why is it a grandpa? Why is not a father? Where's his father? He gave his pocket watch to me. It mm. was cherished treasure. Did you guys know that we have that pocket watch when we first did the equilibrium test? And the description in that pocket watch actually says, like work. <laughs> So he was mentioned all the way back in version 1.0. Wait, where are we going? Find a way to go to the other... Um, this guy. To be more precise, this dream bubble itself is my home. Of course! <laughs> Looks like you've remembered everything now. Wait, mm. wait. Why does it feel like everyone else knows something I don't? Yeah, you're the only one still in the dark. Marge. Do you remember when she mentioned the clocky that only she could see? Yeah, the little guy here, right? But we all saw him in Dreamflux Reef, right? And Mr. Yang even greeted him. Looks like everyone on the Astral Express has a childlike spirit. No, oh, clocky, we know that's the not a thing. lies in the Astral Express. Her experience shows that neither Firefly nor Acheron can see this clocky. But Misha can see Clocky too, right? 
They even grew up together. But Misha hasn't started the way of the trailblaze yet. That's the key to the mystery, March. Now take a moment to recall. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen anyone outside of the crew interact with Misha? But the thing is, March didn't see him at the lobby. What's that all about? I'm a dweller in this dream. Just like a memory zone meme. I should have stayed here and waited for you. But when reality and memories merged, I unconsciously pushed open that door and left the bubble with Clocky. How about we start with your name? Oh. Should we call you Misha? Oh. Or... Mikhail Char Legwork. Or simply, Misha. Okay. Holy shit. Yeah, okay. I kind of already guessed it, but it's still so cool to see it come true. That's the story behind that comment? I guess so, huh? So that's what I nailed. I feel very smart right now. If you prefer, you can call me by a more familiar name. The Watchmaker. If I, I may, may apologize, apologize. the, the Stellaron, Stellaron part is real. real. As, As for, for my, my wealth, wealth However, it's nothing, nothing more, more than, than a baseless, baseless rumor. Oh no, he's like, uh, I do have this uncontrollable, very dangerous thing called Stellar that could destroy an entire world as my legacy, but unfortunately I'm broke. Good to know, Mikhail. And, and my, my hat too. The one, one who navigated for me placed it on my head and planted a fanciful thought in my mind. Oh, is that why the path of, wait, no, Trailblazer's element is imaginary? Because it's a fanciful thought. Imagination. Misha, you're acting weird today. <laughs> if you're feeling down, we can just do what we usually do <laughs> with the clockwork. No, Misha is looking at cocky, all sad and everything. Whether it's calming, Joyful, angry, or, or sad. All they need is a little nudge to take that step toward where they truly belong. I'm leaving that little nudge with you, and I hope you'll share it with others. Such is the essence of clockwork. The will of the trailblaze. I see. That's why trailblazer could use the clockwork. This is where my journey ends. From now on, it is your path to walk. <gasps> Trailblazing means taking paths your predecessors forswore and venturing even further. The Panaconian Mikhail's dreams does not belong to order. <gasps> Yo, goosebumps, man. Not gonna lie though, I thought when the camera kind of like shifted a little bit, we we're gonna see the Misha, the Mikhail from the light cone. But no, we just saw old man Mikhail. Perhaps they want to witness, on behalf of the fallen eons, who will hold the future of Penacony. <laughs> she pays so funny, man. She feels like, ooh, is it gonna be Ina, a dead eon, or is it gonna be Akivili, also a dead eon? Let me just grab my popcorn, join the trailblazer, and see what's gonna happen. Even though the script he gave me only had a few lines, I couldn't ignore them. I'll experience death three times in the land of the dreams. Three? Look at her tiny face and she's saying that she's ready to face her second death. If something bad happens to her, I swear to God. May, May we, we meet again, again in reality. reality. The best small baby murder machine, hell yeah. So true. My three deaths. Silver Wolf told me about it. It's such a shame that it's not part of my script. Wait, that's so true. <laughs> Blit heard from Silver Wolf like, Yo, did you hear? Elio said that Firefly gonna die three times when she's in Panacony. <laughs> Blit is just like, three times? And here I am begging for one. The family deliberately used the Watchmaker's invitation to keep all the Pathstriders here, but banished the Emanator of the Nihility. Because of the Nihility, I'm rarely affected by the power of other paths. 
but somehow I can unconsciously infiltrate them. <laughs> Maybe that's the risk they're trying to avoid. She's so powerful. Hello? Disagree. There's one thing that I need to confirm no matter what. A warp jump is the best way to do mm -hmm. so. Mm. Time is running out. I have another plan. What is it? <gasps> oh, Shenzo music. That's so cool, though. The moment he said he had another plan, and then the Shenzo music just came in. Where is the chosen one who harmonizes the varied sounds? I'm right here in front of you, aren't I? Oh, shit. You know, she was supposed to be the star of the Charmony Festival. The Dream Master from the beginning is planning to use Robin to be the one person who stays awake while everybody else stays in a dream. And then Sunday is trying to protect Robin and it's like, no, 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 it's me. It's me. It's not my sister. It's me, the chosen one, not my sister. Stay away from her. Since you're willing <gasps> to sacrifice yourself for her, I'll grant your wish. Oh my god. Do I want lore or boss fight? I want this chest. How far are we? My god, it's still far. Is the boss fight right after this? Oh man, I'm very torn. But okay, okay. I should follow what I said I would do. We'll stop here for now. We'll see. Either tomorrow or Sunday we'll continue with the last part. What videos do I have in mind? That's a good question. Avenger in lore. Yeah, that was actually something that I wanted to make. The Avenger in an inner video. It's kind of crazy. Let me show you guys this one. It's a bit tricky for me to make videos last month. So I didn't get to make all the videos that I plan to make. But there's this one idea that I wanted to make, but I never did. Let me show you. There. Do you guys see that? I make this whole thumbnail for a video at the end of April. Because I was thinking that this is what's gonna happen in Penacony after watching the trailer and thinking about Robin's letter. But then I ended up not making it because I didn't have the time. So what I ended up making was just this one post assumption and assimilation with Shipe was not truly assimilation. Ina was the origin of Gaeta Triclops. Ina had a similar rebirth festival held in their name when they were still alive. When Robin said the harmony was not pure, it's because Ina was meddling with it. So what if Ina is the dream master of Panacone because of the many eye symbolism on the 2.2? The Charmony festival is Kakava and with this particular festival, Ina was planning to go into their rebirth process and fully take over the path of harmony. <laughs> And then I was like, nothing makes sense in Spanakoni, so I thought might as well make the wildest assumption imaginable. At this point, I kind of regret not making this video, but I didn't have the time. So yeah, that's fun. Missed opportunity. <laughs>